Fully atomistic simulations of combustion reactions can provide very valuable insights into often complex combustion reaction networks. Usually the timescales available to such direct dynamic simulations are limited to nanoseconds. To try and capture events outside this window, simulations are often carried out at elevated temperatures, which can affect product formation and bias the favored reaction pathways. In this video I want to present an acceleration technique within the Amsterdam modeling suite called Collective Variable Driven Hyperdynamics or CVHD in short. It's easy to set up and can accelerate dynamics from nanoseconds to seconds. We shall be looking at the pyrolysis of n dodecane a challenging reaction to simulate because the product chain length is known to depend on the temperature. As usual, I will skip most of the science and background information. You can find a detailed description and a step-by-step -step tutorial in the YouTube video description. In a nutshell, the CVHD algorithm builds up a bias to support overcoming the reaction barrier and once the reaction has occurred, the time can be recovered from the amount of bias added before the bias is reset and builds up to support the next reaction. All this is handled fully automatically by the CVHD algorithm. Setting up the calculation is surprisingly easy. Apart from the usual molecular dynamic settings such as the time step, thermostat and so on, the hyperdynamics require little input from you. Here the top panel contains some settings on the height of the bias, the deposition rate and so on, while the lower two panels define the reaction coordinate for a CC and CH dissociation respectively. The main input parameters are Rmin and Rmax that define a minimum bond distance close to the equilibrium bond length and a maximum bond length close to the transition state region. Once the calculation has been run, you can inspect the dynamics in AMS movie. To visualize the buildup of the bias, select Bias Energy from the MD Properties menu. In the same vein, you can plot the number of molecules against the hypertime. Note that the timescale here is seconds, indicating a tremendous acceleration. To automatically extract all reactions from the simulation, we can use the new ChemTracer 2 reaction detection. Without going into too much detail, we can already see that many long-chain products are formed in a low-temperature combustion simulation, while in a corresponding high-temperature simulation at 2500K, the C2 fraction is clearly dominant. This agrees well with experimental findings as well as kinetic models. I have put a link to a more detailed discussion of the results in the YouTube video description if you are interested. So that's it for today, I hope you found this video useful and as always we are happy to answer your questions and comments below this video.